welcome to part two of our interview with Richard Boisan, Adventure Rich of YouTube. In this video, Rich is going to tell us more about race relations in Panama, the social climate in Panama, and the direction of his YouTube channel going forward. Y'all enjoy. So how would you say expats in general are treated and more specifically black expats in Panama? Because as we talked about a little earlier before coming on, you know, you got a lot of people trying to uh, leave the United States right now with all of the crazy and madness that's going on. Um, and so they're looking for places to go. A lot of people considering Panama, a lot of people watching your videos that are considering Panama. And so um, how would you say uh, uh, expats are treated there? And what's so, the climate like? Usually, I am not the one to get into conversations of race and so on. Uh, I tend to steer clear of that. However, I am happy to report and say I have not personally experienced any sort of racism since I've been here. Again, I'm only here 11 months. But, I mean, there's, a, I guess, a form of classism not necessarily racism, which is something that you're going to experience anywhere. You know what I mean? Like if, if there is no even distribution of wealth amongst any citizens in a country, you're going to have some level of classism. And this, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like you can, I feel like you can achieve the things that you want to achieve here. If you put your mind to it, Panamanians, I see the work very hard mm -hmm. to get what they want to achieve and they, they live the lifestyle that they want to live. So um, I would say there is the, like I've seen an, ex not really experience, but seen a level of classism that can be worked on, but as far as racism, not a bit. And I have been around every possible race that I could possibly be around right here in Panama. The space has people moving in and out of it like crazy. The people that I would find on a remote island off the Pacific coast that is still part of Panama, would blow my mind. Like there would just be this random Dutch or German person that lives there that has been there for 25 years and would welcome me the same way a uh, black Latino from Panama would welcome me. It's, it's, it's no different, but that's me. I, I don't know if there are other people that would have witnessed differently. Um, I, I, I think my tastes tend to lean towards what people would consider um, like I guess what the, the white Americans would appreciate. So for example, living here in Bukete, that's something, it's, it's a part of my childhood, it's a part of me. But then when I think about it, it's, it's, it's like there are a lot of uh, expats here from the US that are not black. And they appreciate the same things that I appreciate. So I feel very welcome here regardless, uh, you know what I mean? And I can go to Playa Benal, I can go to Punta Chami, and I feel welcomed the same way, um, no matter who it is. So that's, I would say, another big thing for me here. Panamanians themselves, and even the people that are, I guess, expats here, are so warm and so welcoming and so friendly. It's unreal. It's not something I've ever experienced. Coming back to surfing, surfing is a very selfish sport. It's not a team effort by any means, you know what I mean, when you get out there. And usually, depending, especially when you go to good breaks around the globe, you witness a lot of like localism and, and people don't want you in the break and it's, it's very tense and crowded lineups and so on. However, here, I have paddled out into some exceptional sort of expecting some aggression and all I've gotten is welcome. That's great. And it's strange, like right there in Trinidad, I, you know, I would have experienced that coming up as a super, new super, what you call a grump. And I, I witnessed none of that here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I would say it's not as present or relevant as what I would have. I, I've been to the US before. I've experienced that. I've been subject of racism right there in Trinidad and Tobago where I'm from. I have not witnessed any of that here That's whatsoever. Great. great to hear. Um, so Panama, we covered, um, in which video was that? Um, maybe why I moved to Panama part one, 
that it's basically it's ranked as the sixth happiest country in the world. So um, the people are generally very friendly and very happy and just going about, you know, living life. And um, I can believe that. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. So with that, tell us more about your YouTube channel. What made you decide to start a YouTube channel? How you decide to make adventure, to, you know, the theme of such extreme adventure. You know, there's adventure and then there's you. Okay. There's levels. And you. Yes. So. I have been into adventure as, as long as I've known myself. Um, very small. I've kind of picked my mom out a couple of times with that, where I've just been wanting to go on adventures. She would actually be very cautious about the movies I see as a young and impressionable little kid <laughs> because I would want to go do those things. I mean, I ended up in things like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but sports like parkour, where you're building, you're jumping from building top to building top and like huge. 10 foot drops and rolling out and just running and like those are the things that i like you know what i mean i've seen them in movies i've attempted them thankfully i still have all my bones intact but i've always leaned towards those adrenaline seeking things um so naturally i feel like when i started the channel that's what i would lean into it's not anything foreign to me to be on adventures and excursions and things of that nature based on the things that i did in Trinidad. Um, in a big way, that's, that, that's what gives me life. You know what I mean? Exploring, doing adventure things. And I did it in Trinidad, not as often as I would have liked, mm -hmm. but then being here in Panama and pretty much locked into what's happening, I, I've, I've had the luxury of being able to explore more than usual. And then I had been encouraged by several people to start a YouTube channel or just start vlogging. Years, no. <laughs> I do necessarily, and I know I might seem comfortable right now, but I'm on edge. Like I, I'm not comfortable in front of a camera. I have eight years of experience of being behind the lens, filming, doing photography and so on, directing. And it's never a comfortable thing for me to be in front of the lens. So I, I actually, I understand <laughs> the discomfort that comes with that. You know what I mean? When I'm doing my directing and so on, I'm wondering why this person is not doing what I'm asking. I, I get it. No, I, I understand. I get it. It's tough being in front of that lens. You know what I mean? Um, so I would have procrastinated for a very long time about doing any kind of vlogs. And uh, aside from that, I'm a, I'm a very private person, despite popular be, you know, belief. <laughs> but I am a private person, so I don't really like revealing that much about my life to the general public. Vlogging, I feel like there's a big part of that that, that kind of breaks that barrier, you know what I mean? So um, just not having much else to do, having the equipment, having that creative itch, it just kind of fell into place like, okay, this might be the time, if ever, to start a YouTube channel and with some friends and motivation from some other friends that are like closer friends that are around me i got into it and i'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the nomadic movement but not they yet. are yeah. a young couple that moved from here from the us um they would have traveled through central america with the intent of going south america right found a book <laughs> and fell in love with it and just that was it for them. Like there was like this, they set up shop, they bought land, they bought a vehicle, and this is where they are. So I had been when I was researching things on Panama, kind of following them and following their journey as when they got to Panama and then backtracking to see what led them to be here and so on. So in a big way, they are the ones that kind of inspired me to get to finally get it going, despite what people have been telling me. So, yeah, um, what I did not expect is the reception. <laughs> when I released the first video, and I was blown away by not only the response, but the subscriber base that was built on that, that right. came over from the nomadic movement. Um, I never considered myself that super interesting person or having things to say that people would be interested in. And that changed my perspective a little bit. I'm like, okay, maybe I should put out just the things that I do randomly or the things that I do on a daily basis. Maybe not daily, but you know what I mean? Like in, like regularly. And maybe it'll 
change your mind somewhere to start seeking adventure. Maybe it would bring some sort of entertainment to someone who needs it during a pandemic, you know what I mean? Um, and that's where the channel was born. And once I realized, okay, this is going somewhere, the opportunity started coming oh, to yeah. be able to adventure more, to be able to explore more. The right eyes were landing on the, the videos and so on. And it just kept getting better and better. It's still getting better where the op more opportunities are coming to explore different places, find out new places, feature places, and so on. So the channel itself has kind of taken a life of its own. Um, I'm trying my very best for it to not take over my life, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that's a tricky thing. But um, it is definitely uh, chugging along and getting more interesting by, the, by, the, by each release, you know what I mean? To the point where I have things backed up now that I'm wondering, okay, what do I release next? You know what I mean? Right. Um, I'm also kind of trying to keep current with the things that are happening. So I don't know if you're, you would have been aware, but right here in the district that we're in had massive flooding based on the last hurricane that passed north of us. They didn't, it didn't hit us, but it passed north. And the, I guess the outer bands of that hurricane would have created a lot of, um, I get, I guess, moisture in the air, lots of rain and so on. Which, right here in Bokete, we were unaware that anything was happening around us. The floods, like floods, I have not seen anything flood here in Bokete as yet. And I'm, yeah, you're uh, elevated yeah. there, you know, Bokete yes. is elevated. It's elevated. So, I mean, even in addition to being elevated, I think like the, I guess the drainage, the, the, the rivers are well set. I, I don't know what it is about this place, but I have never seen or had to feel fear that, I mean, this place rains pretty often. It has like its own microclimate right here in Bukete. So you have conditions coming in from the Atlantic, you have conditions coming in from the Pacific, and it's like right in the middle there is just a lot of things are happening, which is why, you know, the coffee is happy. <laughs> it's the perfect little blend. Right. But I have never seen a flood. Here. Everything is well drained, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Including what happened last week, where there, were, there was a lot of heavy rain and the rivers got brown because usually there is very clear water. So it got brown, which means it was heavy enough to move some dirt. But still, like the river never, never broke their banks, you know what I mean? So we were here completely unaware. And on the other side of the volcano, which is Volcan Baru, um, there's a city called Volcan. Mm -hmm. Within there, there's another, well, it's a district, not a district, but it's like there's an area called Volcan, and within Volcan, there's a place called Cerro Punta. Yes. They got properly distressed. Properly. Like some land moved there that had not moved in over 40 to 50 years just from that rain. And one thing you should know about Cerro Punta is that a lot of the produce that is fed throughout Panama comes from that place. I was able to visit. I mean, it's, it's sad that I was able to visit when the disaster happened. I feel like I should have been there way before that. But when I did visit, it completely blew my mind. What I saw there is just an expanse of landscape that is actually used for uh, just doing crops of all different types. And I, you know how people do their crops and rules and so on. Right. So just seeing just an expanse of different compartments of different produce being grown is crazy. Like I, I, couldn't, like I couldn't process it, it was unreal. But a lot of those crops were lost in that flood. So I am thinking instead of releasing what I wanted to release on, on Saturday, I think I want to release something that's relevant to that, so that not only this is it relevant and, and present of what's actually happening now, but people get to see the other side. Like it's a, it's a different kind of adventure. It's, it's, it's a, it, 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 it hits home. Yeah. It's more of a reality check that, okay, Panama is great, but like everywhere else in the world, it's not perfect. And that's not by any fault of any, like, Man made disaster. This is purely Mother Earth just raging and doing what she does, you know what I mean, when that time comes. So it's not it's no different to everywhere else in the world. It's 
a paradise in its own right, but it's also subject to the other elements that affect the rest of the world. So I'm thinking of releasing that on Saturday instead. Okay, we we'll look forward to seeing that. <laughs> Thank definitely. you. Um, definitely can sympathize with you when you talk about as far as being behind the camera because we're, you know, our channel's fairly new. So definitely it's not something that I'm comfortable with either. So, um, I'm getting there, but it needs work, you know. And um, we're glad the folks said, oh, go ahead. You're doing a good job. Oh, man, I'm, I'm faking it, man, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm um, glad that uh, folks at Nomadic Movement uh, encourage you to do this because we're reaping the benefits of your, you know, wonderful work. We've been sharing a lot of it on Facebook, and it's getting a lot of great reaction. Um, to you know your videography is it's amazing it really is thank you um so what if, what piece of advice would you give people you know one or two things who are considering becoming expats in panama like i said there's a lot of people um watching this video who may be considering panama versus colombia or costa rica or some of these other places what are the uh, couple of pieces of advice that you would give them if they're considering panama as their expat destination three words <laughs> Just, just do it. <laughs> just, <laughs> just do it. Um, however, I would not say get here and buy property and try to live. I would say try it out first. As much as it is that versatile where I feel like there's something for everyone, I feel like you should get here and try it out first. And I don't mean three weeks. I mean come here for a year, rent a place, move into the different district, see what it has to offer, spend some time here, integrate, that's a big part of it too. Integrate with the people here. Even if you don't speak Spanish, integrate. I've been in situations, I kind of threw myself into situations where it's a little out of my comfort zone, but it forced me to integrate with the people, talk a little more Spanish, mm -hmm. and just pretty much appreciate what Panamanians do. And you know what I mean? So I would definitely say if you're considering it, by all means, I would encourage it. But just integrate it. Make sure you spend a lot of time here. Make sure it is for you. Um, the things that I appreciate, not everybody else. Actually, I, I, I have very specific things. But I still feel like there is much to be appreciated here. So just, just do it. Just, Great just advice. Do it. <laughs> Great it advice. Amazing. Just do it. Yep. So, um, we have a, a segment of the show here called uh, Hechos Divertidos de Panama. That's fun facts about Panama. So we just like to try to throw in a couple of um, things because we know people are considering moving to Panama. And I just feel like if we're going to move to a country, we have to learn some things about it. So um, one thing about Panama that we mentioned in our house stable is the economy in Panama video that might surprise some people is that Panama has the second largest free trade zone in the world behind Hong Kong. That's 1,065 acres. It's the Cologne Free Trade Zone up near Cologne. And then we also have a segment here called uh, Panama Sabias, which is Did You Know? So, um, Rich, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. You, you're probably not going to know this, but I don't know. You might. Did you know that Panama is the only place in the world, has the only place in the world where you can see with the naked eye the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean at the same time? Did you know that? That's right. That's right, and I can tell you exactly where you can. Oh, uh, well. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and tell the people then. Tell them. Um, Volcan Baru. Um, it's this volcano, this, I guess this volcano that's sitting, I can see it from here. Um, it's been eluding me. Every time I got the opportunity to go up, something happened, um, including the pandemic. And then quite recently, I was supposed to go up with a group, and I mistook the date that they were going to be like a day before or whatever. So oh. I missed the opportunity again. And this is quite recently, as in last week. So um, I'm yet to get there. And then um, there are limitations as to how you can visit where before you could have gone at night and then camped out and seen the sunrise and all of those right. things. No, with the restrictions that are in place, I think you can only go up from 5 a.m. till oh. 5 like that. That's so cool. the things that I have in mind to get when I go up there, I can't even get because I'm I'm thinking night time lapses of stars and, and, and crazy yes. things like that. I now can't do that based on the restrictions. So I have to wait until until things really open back up. So 
Volcan Baru is this thing that I can see right there, but it feels like almost intangible. Like I can't get to it. Yes, but right there. When, you, when you do get up there, once it's a clear day, which happens in summer, which is coming up um, in December, um, you can see both the Atlantic and the Pacific coasts at the same time when you're up there. Quite an amazing view from what I've seen. I can't wait to witness it myself. I can't believe Thank I haven't yeah. gotten there yet. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of those fun facts. Same here. And that's uh, people, that's just because Panama is only about 48 or 50 miles wide. Vulcan Baru is about 11,400 um, feet in altitude. So on a clear day from the peak of Vulcan Baru, you can see both oceans, both the Atlantic and the Pacific. And so, um, and that's too bad you can't get the shots you want, Rich, because I'm hearing that's about a five hour hike to get up there. You know, so a lot of people do leave like uh, midnight, you know, and 1 a.m. to try to go up there. But I guess from what you're saying, you can't do that right now. So you can't see the sunrise or anything. So it takes away from Yeah, by the time you get up there, I mean, there are four by four tours that head up there. I actually want to drive it myself in a four by four. But even then, it takes about an hour to get up there. So if you leave at 5 a.m. and you get up there by 6, maybe 6.30, mm -hmm. sunrise, you know what I mean? So, but I mean, Eventually, things will open up the way it's supposed to. This is just like the first step towards getting back to some some, some sort of normalcy. Right. Um, there are a couple other fun facts that I want to throw in there. Seeing that Go this ahead, is the man. Go ahead. Um, apparently, Panama is the only place where you can see, if I, let me see if I get this correct, you can see the sun rise from the western coast, if I, if I remember that correctly. Because the way Panama is shaped, that if you're on the west coast, is it the west coast? There's something called the Azura Peninsula that comes down and goes mm -hmm. back up. There's some part of that that allows you, and it's the only place in the world that you can do it, where you can see the sun rise from the west coast versus the east. Right. It's, um, you can see the sun rise over, um, over the Pacific Ocean and set over the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's another one where they are still discovering species of animals here in the Darien. Which is crazy to think that, I mean, in this, we are in 2020 and there are still species of animals that are being discovered, one. And two, that it's happening right here in the Darien, in Panama. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, uh, pretty it's amazing. So just to let the people know, so um, Darien uh, is the, the forest, the rainforest that Rich is talking about. The Darien Gap, that's basically the uh, area between Panama and Colombia. You cannot drive across into the Colombian border because of the jungle is so dense there. And so that's the area that Rich is talking about where they're still discovering new species of animals. That's the area where the Inter-Americana Highway or the Pan-American Highway that runs all the way from Panama up to Alaska, it ends right there because of how thick the forest is. So you got to take a boat or a plane to get to Colombia. Can't get there um, by land. So That's right. thanks for adding those. And so, um, <laughs> no you know, since you did that, we're going to add a little bit extra here. So I just decided to add in a couple of little fun oh, facts about Trinidad and Tobago, fun facts, Trini style. So Rich, wow. <laughs> did you know that uh, Trinidad and Tobago has the largest natural asphalt deposits in the world? Did you know That's that? Right. I did. <laughs> I did. You know where that is? It's in La Brea, it's south of Brea. Trinidad, uh, so in the southern part of Trinidad, yes, that's right. Pitch Lake, right? Pitch Lake, that's right. Pitch Lake. So yeah, yeah so they have uh, 10 million tons of asphalt um, that's there. So that's the largest natural asphalt deposits in the world. So that's one thing. I you think that may not be best in the world as well, right? But no, that's not the case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know you guys. We know you guys got carnival covered. So um, you, I didn't even oh, yeah. mention that one. Y'all got that covered. <laughs> one other thing I dug up that surprised me is that Trinidad and Tobago is where the um, the limbo originated from. Did you know that? Then you know the limbo dance, right? You That's dance the stick. They said it originated no. in Trinidad. No, I did not. That's embarrassing. That's amazing. <laughs> That's an amazing <laughs> fact. I knew that it was a Caribbean thing. I didn't realize it originated in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. That's what I found out. So um, one of, I got one more. So um, you mentioned earlier GDP of Trinidad 
and that it's um, while it's not super rich, it is it is you know the company is economically in good shape. So Trinidad actually has the third largest GDP in the Americas. Um, and in 2011, it was taken off of the list by the World Bank, taken off the list of developing countries um, because it's doing very well. So um, that's one thing a lot of people, that may surprise some people, has the largest um, GDP in all of the Caribbean and the third largest in the Americas. So if you get a chance to visit Trinidad, I haven't had a chance to visit yet. I'm dying to get there, but um, definitely want to go check it out. Amazing. Yeah. It's like a mini Panama. Yes. Concentrated Panama, Panama yeah. <laughs> Everything smacked into one and then some. Yep. So um, we wanted to try to, you know, just bring some things out about your native country since you were so gracious enough to join us. You know, I know you're a pretty busy guy these days. Um, but well, thank you for joining us, Rich. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. I'm going to be in touch for those surfing lessons, man. I'm not, I'm not even playing about that, just so you know. Hit me up. Hit me up. <laughs> I'm coming. All right, man. Take care, brother. We'll see you. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Bye.